Good evening. We can we hear are you. Going ahead. Yeah. We are going ahead to start our program and um, the theme of this program is marriage and spirituality. And uh, I'm going straight to talk about the marriage and spirituality. When we talk about um, uh, meaning of the spirituality of marriage, it refers as all the religious practice through which a husband and wife live one out vocation of marriage in light of faith. Catholic marriage have a distinctive spirituality that is sacramental, communitarians and the missionaries. Marriage is sacramental because it's a sign of Christ's unbreakable love for his people. It refers to the union between Christ and the church. It is a commentarian because it is a created, is a created and a deepened, a permanent partnership of life and love. It is missionary because it is Catholic marriage couples are called to share with one another good news of their relationship in Christ. So we're talking about the spirituality of marriage today. This spirituality of marriage is the aspect of union between husband, wife, and God. It's not all about only husband and wife, but here we are bringing in Christ, God, into this um, marital life, which any marriage without Christ has a loophole, definitely. And that is why we want to bring it to our, my, our knowledge today that Probably the connection. Mm -hmm. I guess she's having a stroke from the Okay, please let Are you me hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? All right, go ahead. We can hear you. Continue. Okay. So I said every marriage, we have known what is marriage and um meaning of marriage anyway. And today, because of time, we want to go just straight to the spirituality part of the marriage. And um, from what we're reading here. Um, spiritual marriage or spirituality of every marriage have to involve Christ. The moment anyone did not involve Christ in his or her marriage or in any marriage, that means that marriage will lack a lot of ingredients to live in peace. Because every good marriage will deepen their self in Christ in order to accept and um, depends on the God direction. And this is only way that you can be able to have a peaceful marriage. The moment you allow God to live in your marriage, you will get the best of the marriage, marital process, which is all about we getting more in close to God and intimacy with Christ. We talk about um, marriage as sacrament. Um, and we say it is a sign of Christ's unbreakable love for his people. Christ loves us so much that he, he paid a lot of price for us. So in our marriage, we should follow up the love of Christ to stand a standard in marriage. And building your home and your marital affairs in the fear of God. The moment you bring Christ in, is when we talk about mar spiritual marriage or spir spirituality of marriage, we are not only talking about husband and wife. But we should explain it as talking about husband, wife, and God. Because that God there will bring the light in your marriage. When you allow God to join in your marriage, you know, you are bringing the best ingredients to your marriage. You are bringing light to your marriage. You are bringing hope to your marriage. You are bringing peace to your marriage. Patience and, in, and uh, patience and uh, love will be the rule of your marriage. 
But the moment you keep God aside from your marriage, which make it that spirituality is not there. And we should know that before any marriage stand, the spirituality we manifest in physical. Before any marriage, we have a peaceful home or any couples, we enjoy peaceful life. God must stand. Where as a Christian, as a Catholic precisely, when there is not a uh, God first in your marriage, that means all you are doing is on your own human wisdom, which is earthly, which is a worldly wisdom. And that is why today we should learn how to connive with God in our mind. In fact, putting God first in any of our marriage. We want to talk about the sacramental side of it. When we talk about the sacramental side of it, the unbreakable love of Christ will be there for you. You express that sacramental as a Catholic by doing all the necessary things it calls for you to take. Then when we talk about the... Uh, Sorry, the network is bridging. Are you hearing me? Are we yes, hearing me? We can hear you. Okay. Go yeah. So when we talk about good spirituality of marriage, it brings about joy, peace, trust, love, forgiveness, and fulfillment, even bringing fulfillment in your marriage. You see that other people aside, which we talk about ministry, we talk about missionary, people around you, we cope and learn something better from it. In fact, your marriage will present Christ living like. The moment you apply God-fearing in your marriage, it will represent Christ living like in your marital home. When we get to another session, we get to another session, which is building a spiritual foundation for your marriage. This is the major one I want us to get on. Many homes today lack this factor in their marriage, building a spiritual foundation for your marriage. If you want your marriage to grow strongly, one of the most important questions and your spouse should answer is, how are you going to grow spiritually? Many of us may be asking growing spiritually, growing spiritually. This is all about deepening and having intimacy with Christ. This how are you going to grow spiritually? Is all of us asking ourselves, how can we grow intimately with Christ? How are we going to keep our marriage on the bed, uh, bed ground of what God has made for us? Do not do that in the commandment. Do not do that in the commandment. Husband should love his wife. Wife should obey the husband and be submissive. These are the foundation things you have to bring in into your marriage, which will make the marriage to grow strongly. Because God created marriage and it is not merely two people in relationship, but three, a husband, a wife, and God. Failing to address this question can almost guarantee that your marriage will not achieve the intimacy and oneness that God designed. If you do not ask yourself this question, definitely you may be confused. You may not be able to get the best part of the thing that God have already set for you in your marriage. So for this, as many of us that is hearing me this night, it's better, my advice is better in this place, building your spiritual foundation for your marriage. It's better that we should first of all marry a believer who knows Christ. You yourself should know Christ. Grow together from the day one of your marriage. Commit yourself. Let the foundation be made from the top root of Christ. Let the foundation be made in the church. Let the foundation be made in fearing of God, keeping the rules and regulations that guide marriage through spiritual aspects, doing what that will bring the light of God burning in your home, not bringing the light of God down, avoiding unnecessary things that will kill the spirituality of your marriage, avoiding things that will bring problems into between you and your husband. Let's go to another point, which is um, we find marriage first and foremost in a spiritual relationship and it's work best when two people connected individually to their God. When a husband and wife is so tired, as I have said, connected too deeply individually to their God, you see that whatever they will do, they will do it both together. You will not see a husband 
having another thought and the wife is having another thought because this is the major problem we are having in marital in marital life today when a wife we feel that is bigger than husband or when a husband is feel that is bigger than wife because there is not union or unity between them there is no unity that is binding them when the spirit of god is not in them when they are not granted as a believer a marriage we can even go to church for money tonight, but we did not know the aspect of spirituality of marriage. It doesn't matter how many years you are in the marriage session. It doesn't matter how many years you are giving your life to Christ. It matters the wisdom. Do you have that inspiration and wisdom how to connect to Christ and bring the example to your own marriage? You set a good example. People will now watch you, around you, will learn from you how you draw light to the world through the Christ living life you are living in your marital aspect of life. The let's go to okay, John 15, verse 5. John 15, verse 5 said, If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear fruit. You can do nothing without me. Somebody also can help us and read it so that others will hear it clearly. <laughs> Somebody can help us to read John. Chapter 15, verse 5. I am the van. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You see it's what we are saying. So we connect. Please admit yourself. If you abide in him, he will also abide in you. And without you abiding in him, he said it clearly in John 15 verse 5, that you will bear no fruit. But the moment you abide in him, you will bear definitely a good fruit. And that is why we should, if you want to bear a wonderful fruit in your marriage, you should keep out everything you have in the law of Christ. You should connect to the spirituality of the church, Christ, to your marriage. You should bring out the good example of Christ have laid for us as a, on, from the background, from the stage, first stage of your marital life to the end. And you should maintain that law that the God has already set in your marital life. Then we should go to, if you also spiritually, in a dimension of spirituality, you ignore any other thing that God has already tabled for us in his commandment. Definitely, there is no how we will not make a mistake in life. There is no how you will not make a mistake in life. If we try to use the old human understanding to build your own marriage, there is no how you will not make a mistake. So we'll go to another point. Yeah. How can can you hear me? That's the best slide. Yes, I know. I didn't see clearly, but I'm there. How can we grow spiritually together? You have to deepen your life and your marital life in God. When you build your life on Christ, on God, you and your spouse, we believe strongly in God. Let's go to Colossians chapter two, verse seven. He says that keep your, Colossians chapter two, verse seven. Yeah, somebody should read it for us. Keep your roots deep in him. 
build your lives on him and become stronger in your faith as you are taught and be filled with thanksgiving. Thank you. When you keep your root deep in Christ, you devote every all your time, marital life to him and commit it in his strength and his own uh, way of life, bringing the life of Christ in your marriage. You see that you grow strongly in, with your partner, especially when your partner did something wrong for you. You don't need to keep it in your mind. These are the things you should let go in this stage. Learn how to love each other. Learn how to speak together with each other. Learn how to forgive each other. Learn how to do all these things together. You can even go ahead, pray together. Every family that prays together stays together. But many of us today, we don't even have that time to pray together. We don't have that time to do anything together, even communication. A husband will go out without telling the wife where he went to. A wife will go out without telling husband his, her own way of life or what he needed. But today we want to deepen this legend by fearing God, keeping the roots deeper in Christ. When you build life on God, your spouse will become stronger in faith and the love of Christ. Praying for, pray for and with each other. Make this your own common practice. Every time before you go to bed, you start from when you finish, wherever you are going, come back. Both of you should always pray together. Share what the word of God is talking about together. Then this is the place you bring your own differences together. This is what I pass through. This is what I pass through. Then by joining all this together, you will be able to know son's mind. You will be able to know your partner's mind. Then this is the place also, you will be able to do some analysis, what you want or what your partner did that you don't want. And you reconcile before going to bed together. You should not carry over pens to tomorrow morning. This is a, a closest set that you should lie together. Even you can go ahead to a practice physical one, bathing together. By making all this, you will see that the grudges in your heart, you will release it out. Then peace will be able to reign. Then you pray together and look for the verses. You can pick some verses that is here also. Meditate on it, which will help your marriage to know what you do and not not to do. What not to do also in your marriage. And when you wake up in the morning, I advise couple, the moment before you speak to anyone, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you will do is to commit your marriage in the hand of God. The moment you commit your marriage in the hand of God, ask him to take over that marital life. He will be able to control that marriage. Another one, studying the verses Bible, that studying the verses of Bible. We set some 119 here, verse 3. We say, the word of God is the lamp for my feet and the light on my path. If the word of God is a lamp to your feet and light to your path, that means when you don't study Bible together as a couple, how will you know what the Bible is teaching us? So if you want to be the spirituality of your marriage, you should pray together. You should read the verses together. You should forgive each other their sins before lying down. Make sure that you did not go to bed with your personal issue or offense. We go to the another point. What are the enemies of marriages? What are these enemies of marriage? When we talk about enemy of marriage, enemy of marriage, many of us today are experiencing this in our marital life. But in nutshell here, the enemy of marriage, this can be more in number, but generally speaking, 
we bring out few here that can help us to know. But for us to know the enemy of mind, this is there anything that can fuel or help fuel conflict and destroy marriage. Anything that is not working in your marriage, any idea you're bringing or any attitude or any behavior that will fuel the conflict, in your, that will fuel a conflict in your marriage or that will bring misunderstanding in your marriage or that will destroy your marriage trust. These are the things we call enemy of marriage. And this enemy of marriage, we said number one, sexual immorality, which is killing many marriages today. Sexual immorality today, you have taken almost all the married marriages. Adultery, you see married women keeping boyfriend, as lovers, you see um, men also bringing in girls, marrying even to their same, keeping um, concubine up and down. We talk about pornography addit addiction. This one also is another problem that is killing our marital life today. And marital life of people, uh, 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 almost every marriage that is around the, around the world today. We, uh, there is one we call masturbating. People also in marriage, they masturbate. These are the things called as immorality, sexual immorality. If you want your marriage to be at peace, you should avoid sexual immorality. You should avoid pornography addition. You should not be tempted to involve yourself anything that will destroy the taproot of your faithfulness in marriage. Because the moment you the moment you bring in infidelity in your marriage, or you bring in sexual immorality in your marriage, I am telling you that that marriage, the vow you took on the day of your wedding day, you have already automatically weakened it. You have already designed sending Christ, disconnecting from Christ. At the moment, the spirit of Christ is departed from your marriage. You see, that is when the marriage will be crashing and being in dark. So we should avoid any condition or anything that will link up us as a Christian or as a Catholic to involve this in this art of adultery. Many of us, we tell you that I don't know how to avoid it, but try by putting anything that will even link you, even the temptation, the occasion that it will happen, avoid it. We go to disrespect. Many of us disrespect our partners. You see husband bullying the wife. You see wife also talking to the husband. We should learn how to respect everyone. Husband have his own respect. Wife have his own respect. Don't say I am a man. Because of that, I can talk to my, uh, my wife as I like. We should know that even if you are husband, we are practicing what that will take us to heaven. However you build your, your marriage, you will ask the question or you answer the question at the last day. So when we are talking about the spirituality, you are living your marriage not only on the physical aspect, but as Christ-like, we should not let that be out of our mind. So whatever you will do that will make you to be an enmity with your wife, avoid it, or with your husband. And another thing, since the marriage did not end in spirituality, only you and your wife is also with Christ. Whatever you do to your wife, you are doing it to Christ. And whatever you do to your husband, you are doing it to Christ. So we should be also allowed that we should di differentiate good and bad, not to disrespect our partner and figure out and make your limits and put that to your boundaries. What can be able to say, this is what my wife had. This is what my husband had. This is what I will do. Then I will disrespect my wife. Or this is what I will do. I will disrespect my husband. Because of time, we can't be explaining on those things. But now we have also the one that we call immaturity or petty life. There is many people today because they will grow annoyed when their couple correct, correct them. You see, in that brain that the couple will not even care. He said the couple will be avoiding them. There is many cases like that, that the moment you tell the husband truth, the husband will swear on you. These are things that devil used to destroy marriage that's supposed to be united. Husband that one is one. If you cannot be able to stand bold to tell your partner what you are doing is bad, because when you 
say that there will be a lipo, or when you say that it will create argument, that means we should ask for grace of God in this. Because already, immaturity in marriage, we bring a uh, log ahead. It will bring confusion in your marriage. It can even bring lack of communication. Because when you are not matured, you may go around and seek for a consolation in a wrong hand. If you are the type that your husband will correct or your wife will correct, you will be annoyed. Tomorrow, the wife may decide not to talk. And this will bring a barrier. And when there is a lack of, a lack of communication in marriage, it will bring dark parts in that marriage. Marriage is the is it one of the tap root that holds sorry. Communication is one of the tap root that hold peaceful marriage and the unity in the marriage. Then when this immaturity of speaking to one another is not there, definitely this can work out, this person can work out, this person can turn cat, this can turn dog. So we should avoid pettiness or immaturity. Then turning your attention away from your spouse. You don't allow melting to take your attention away from your spouse. Especially people that engage 24 hours on work. Some people today, phone is our major problem. Android phone. By the time you're supposed to be with your husband, by the time you're supposed to be with your wife, every family is supposed to set time. This is the time to pray. This is the time to eat together. This is the time to, to a, a peaceful home. From the day one of your marriage, you should set out your boundaries. This is a time to build, uh, to come together on the altar of Christ to pray. This is a time for us to bath together as a couple. It's not a crime. All these things are the ingredients that will build the love of your marriage, the unity of your marriage. This is a time to couple and wife, the, the husband and wife should be together, share stories, talk about their day, how their day they met, whether it is tough or it is better. You share it and advise each other. This is a time you should also know when to cook together. Husband says, okay, let me help my wife today. Let me, these are the things you do that will connect the spirituality of your mind. Because when husband and wife don't set time, the time can't even have time to pray together. Many families today, year to year, they don't pray together. They don't go to church together. They don't do anything together. Then we have a lack of proper communication, which I have indirectly said. Lack of communication. Then we should go to, I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for immorality, and marry another woman, commit adultery. And we should go to also Hebrew. Okay, sorry. Let marriage be hold in honor among all you. That is Hebrew 13 verse 4. Let marriage be hold in honor among all and let that marriage undefined for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers our marriage should hold in honors we should not de de divide our marital bed even we should not divide our soul the moment you are together as husband and wife we should try and put this devil away we should try and tell the devil that I will avoid you totally. We should. Now, how can you overcome all this? You can only overcome all this today by taking sincerity and deep look on your own way of life. I want you to, if you are also, your marriage is facing all these things meant here, Weaknesses in this, please. I want you to take it upon yourself, breathe in and out, look into inward of your soul and your heart. All these that I mentioned here, are you involved in it? Tell yourself the truth so that you can be able to identify those things. Then you now will go to where to turn back to Christ, confess your sin. The way you can confess, the way you can come back to God is confess your sin. Tell God everything you have done. God is not a man. Repent and receive Christ. 
from them. And forgive your own past. Forget your own past. And also forgive yourself. Now, when you surrender your life to God, you allow him to be the master of your soul. The moment you have confessed your sin, you forgive yourself, you go close to him, and from that moment, this minute, you tell God to be the master of your faith. The moment God becomes the light of your marriage and master of your life, it will imply, it will, it will reflect to your marriage. The moment you give your life to Christ and turn aside from the bad, bad thing, we are doing it as a couple. It will reflect in your daily life. Immediately, it will reflect in your marriage, marital life. By faith, give your own self to Christ. Then continue to walk in the things of God. Anything that connected to Christ, continue doing it by reading scriptures, confess, going for confession, receiving bless, going for blessed sacrament to pray also, receiving sacrament, receiving holy communion, going for money mass. Make sure that you build yourself, especially when you're a baby Christian, make sure that you build yourself by going to confession, confessing, go to your priest as a Catholic, confess your sin. Make sure you go to mass. Make sure you receive Holy Communion. These are the things, all these sacramental, these are the things that will help you to be strong in God. You see that automatically, devil will go gradually away from your life. The moment you give your life to Christ in all these things and start doing the right thing, you see devil will definitely run away. So we should learn how to also be a called born again in Christ, a called believer in Christ by putting aside our bad way, by removing anything that will bring down your marriage. Thank you.